Hey, check out new set. You've heard me talk many times about the importance of fans. The job that they are doing is probably one of the most underappreciated parts of your computer. They're literally moving air so that you get great performance. In this video, I'm going to unbox this 140 millimeter Fantex fan, put it into Project 7, and discuss all of the little intricacies that come into assembling and attaching a fan to your case and to your motherboard. This is the Project 7 series, a long form review of how you can build a computer here in 2021. If you're into gaming performance content like this, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, maybe even consider subscribing. Unboxing is very, very simple. There is not really a lot to this one at all. We have accessory kit and a Isolator, which I will talk about. Those are very important if you are noise conscious. This right here is a splitter that is probably attached to the fan. A lot of fan manufacturers are going in that direction. And there we have it. Now this particular Fantex fan, I'm feeling around. I don't feel any isolators along these edges, this is typically where it's going to live, is right where you're going to screw it into the case. This works to separate the case from the fan assembly, because no matter how tight this is, there's still gonna be a little bit of vibration from that fan, it's gonna spin, so obviously there should be. What you wanna focus on the most though, is having a physical separation between the case and the fan itself. That's where, this right here is going to come in. Now this appears to be about one, maybe even two millimeters thick of a rubber silicon material. These will slide on to specific pivots around the fan assembly itself. This will serve as an isolator. So as the fan is slightly vibrating, it won't be able to vibrate all the way to the metal of your case. That is exactly what you want. That's what you wanna see. Now I talked about this in a previous video when we were mounting the AIO solution for the CPU. These screws right here have a very aggressive bite to them. They are designed to screw into this plastic housing right here. What you're gonna do is you're going to place the fan, then you're going to go on the opposite side of the case, screw this through the case into this plastic. These screws bite into the physical plastic, and if you have a good manufacturer, this should not break. I have seen some fan assemblies kind of crack as you're screwing this in, not even over tightening, just simply the act of screwing it in cause cracks. I'm hoping that these Fantex won't have that problem. We will certainly see. The last little thing that I wanna talk about are these splitters right here. You'll note you have two cables. You have one cable that has two notches inside of it. You have another cable here that has essentially three pins and they kind of look like they could plug together. What this is, is a daisy chain. You can plug multiple fans into the same header. As long as you don't exceed the amperage of the header itself, that is perfectly safe to do. In fact, when I pull the case out, that's exactly what I'm going to show that Fantex has done on the front of Project 7. This right here will plug into the fan header. Now, I've talked also a lot about headers, and we're going to go into more detail of that once I bring the motherboard out here. This is where you can plug in additional fans and have those powered off of that same header. So all of the fans that you plug in in a circuit like this will work in unison. They will work together. Same RPM, same RGB. Now, wait a second there, Professor. You see, not all fans allow you to daisy chain the RPM. These Fantex actually only allow you to daisy chain the RGB. Each of the fans has to be connected to a separate fan header or to a fan controller. You're wrong on that part, but that's okay. Every fan in every case is different. All right, same colors if that is what you were going for. Now, some people, me included, don't always like the stickers 
being shown on the fan motor housing assembly right here. You can oftentimes remove these stickers. I've even painted some on Project Red Star where I didn't like the Lee and Lee back sticker. I removed it, painted it, and made it very flush so that it basically doesn't stick out in my case. That is completely optional to you. The last thing I want to talk about is fan direction. Now, a lot of manufacturers will print on the side the direction that the air is supposed to travel. If they haven't done that for you, the air will move towards the motor and it will be drawn in towards the side without the motor. This is 100% the way it works with every fan that I have ever seen in a computer. The side that doesn't have the motor housing, this is the exhaust side. The side that does have the fan assembly is the intake side. As long as you can remember that, you're pretty much good to go. But it's always nice to see confirmation on the side of the fan too. Okay, so let's go ahead and get these rubber mounts assembled and then we'll pull out the case. In this particular instance, I am going to mount this behind the CPU, the AIO itself. Don't know if I'm necessarily gonna keep it there, but I am gonna put that in place. So what that means that I'm gonna have to do is place the rubber gasket grommet circle donutty things. I'm gonna put them on this side the motor side, because that's the part that's gonna go against the case itself. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Now, I really like the fact that these are sticky. That means placing them in place is super easy. You're just aligning it to the hole, pushing it down ever so slightly to make it stick, and then you're done. Not complicated at all. There is no particular pattern, any of that sort of stuff. You can put this on both sides if you want. You can paint these. I did try to paint some. For Project Red Star, rubber is really hard to paint though, so it doesn't always come out as ideal as you might like. There you go. Completely ready to assemble in our case, so I gotta go grab it. Now there are four screws and there are four spots on the fan assembly that we're going to mount to. On the case itself, there are two areas where you can install a fan. In this particular instance, this area is designed to take a 140, which is going to be these outer areas, or a 120, which is going to be these inner areas. This makes it super easy when it comes to actually getting the fan that you are trying to get in place because it's only gonna go in one of those slots. Now, as you're getting ready to install the fan, you might be tempted to simply install it so that the logo is facing up, but you have to take note of another thing, and this is the placement of the fan headers themselves. So I have a fan header right here that I can take advantage of. I have fan headers along this edge. I have fan headers along this edge, which means in this particular case, because this is gonna be my exhaust fan, this header here makes the most sense to tap into for this fan. This is a very common place you'll find a header because having an exhaust fan directly behind the CPU fan is a good way of increasing your thermal output. So for me, I'm going to tap into this header here or I'm going to string this all the way along to the front here, taking advantage of these gaps in the case. So let's go ahead and unzip tie this. So the fan assembly is going to sit there. And then this extra, I'm going to end up tucking right back here. This is all part of our cable management. And then I have this extra right here. It should work exactly that way. So I'm going to make sure that I can get this properly tucked behind here as best I can. Sometimes you'll have different channels that you can route these cables. That's not the case in this particular fan, but I think we're good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place two screws in here and go ahead and start the process of mounting the fan. And I'm not going to fully commit though until I at least have some 
more confirmation that that cable is going to work. What do I mean by fully commit? I didn't screw these all the way in. You see how I left a little bit of a gap? This is in place. It will hold, but it hasn't bit into that plastic yet. You can always back these off. You don't have to live with this for the entire life of the fan or the case, but because there is always a chance that this could break, I'm just being a little bit more ginger than I might with some other components. All right, let's now see if I can get that cable routed the way I want. Okay, so that won't work. So now I have to consider these headers over here or go with this fan header right there. This is all again part of cable management. I just want to make sure my cables are properly tucked away, not visible, and it's an aesthetic thing. If you don't want to go to this extreme, you don't have to. What I'm going to take advantage of is that this Fantex has a slot right here and a slot over here. I believe I can route this cable, have it ready to connect over here, and that should give me a good clean front appearance. Okay, so you can see I have two cables now stuck through. This is going to help me clean up the inside appearance. I can run this cable along this channel up here and plug it in right through here to get it to the actual motherboard right there. So let's talk a little bit about these cables. So this is a four wire cable assembly. I don't have three wires to actually show you. I don't use them. Four wires means I have the ability to control the fan speed itself. Three wires means you do not. You'll also note those grooves. There's also pieces of plastic on the fan headers themselves. That makes it super easy to tell that it's a fan header. If it doesn't have those grooves, it's not a fan header, just so that you know. So we're going to orient this the right way. The little plastic tab goes in between those grooves. You give it a little bit of a push and then everything is good to go. Now on this motherboard, this top header is for a pump. If you're doing liquid cooling, that's where it would go. So I'm going to use the one that is slightly below that. I'm just going to line up the wire crimps and then give it a little bit of a push. When I do cable management, we'll tighten this up and clean that up. But our fan is now wired to the motherboard itself, which means we can go ahead and finish screwing this in. All right, so I have them all four loosely attached, but you can see I can slide the fan mechanism up and down just like this. What I want to try to do is actually aim towards the middle. I would like to take full advantage of the fan, and this does have a cross pattern to it this hexagonal filter mesh thing. So I want the fan to center there. That'll also give it slightly better aesthetics. Okay, so I have attached one screw. You can see right there, simply tightening it down. I didn't hear any popping, which is a telltale sign of plastic breaking. So I'm pretty happy with that version of the installation. I'll go ahead and do all four, and then we should be done with installing this fan. Another thing I want to note, I use the cross pattern to put in my first two screws. I will do the same thing right here. I'm going to go this way and then I'll wrap up down there. Okay, so now the fan itself is in place. This one is wired up. So let's take a little bit of time to talk about the ones that came pre-wired from Fantex. Those fans are right here. You can see several different outputs right there and then down here in this mess, we also see how they were daisy chained together, just like that. So what I am going to do is I am going to make sure that these get properly attached to a header on the system. This is going to make sure that all of those fans are working good and proper. And then I will show you kind of how everything ended up in its proper place. Okay, so now we have all of the fans in the case connected. These three up front are connected around the motherboard itself. The one in the back is connected up in the corner. When I power the system on, all three of them spin. But we have that daisy chain that we also need to worry about. This is part of 
an RGB system, and those RGB lights have to be connected together properly in order for all of this to work. And that's going to be my next topic.